One common practice I see in Power BI reports is manually updating dates or timeframes on the report page whenever the report is updated. This often involves manually changing January to February, then to March, or using a timeframe text box on the report page to inform users about year-to-date or month-to-date period in the visual. What if I told you there's a quick and elegant solution to eliminate the hassle of manually updating these details? That's exactly what we will cover today. Let's roll the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. By doing so, you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. There are a couple of different methods you can use to automate this task and I show you a few different ways today. If you are particularly interested in a specific solution, use the timestamps below to jump to that section. Without further ado, let's head over to Power BI and get started. On this report page, I have a couple of visuals focusing on year-to-date results. Let's assume that the report is updated monthly, and I want to ensure that the report consumers immediately see the latest month's name in the page header. As I mentioned in the intro, there are a couple of different options to achieve this. Today, I'll create a measure for the page name that includes a date section. Great, now we can add this measure to a card visual and place it in the top left corner. Well, it does show a date, but it's not exactly what we are looking for, right? Let me adjust our measure a little bit to only show the month name of the last sales date column. And just like that, we have our first solution done, indicating the last month's name in the title. This will refresh every time we refresh the model. In the second example, let's say we would like to add the last day listed to our daily sales line chart. This might be part of a daily sales tracker report or something similar, and we want to ensure that report users know the latest day included in the report. To do this, we are going to create a measure called last updated date info. First, we add the text last day included in the report, and then find the max date from the sales table. Let's make sure we format the date to make it visually appealing, at least for those who use the same data formatting option as us. Now we can add this measure to the subtitle of the line chart. And just like that, we have a subtitle that updates automatically, so we don't have to remember to change the date every single time. Now, this method can also be used to create a last updated info box on the report page. This is useful if you need to inform users about the last time the report was updated, or more specifically, what is the latest sales included, sales date included in the report. There is a slight difference between the last refresh date and the last sales date, but I digress. One of the things that can throw people off is not knowing the time period in question. This is especially true if you move away from a regular calendar, such as the one that you have on your desk or fridge. In this example, we're going to utilize a weekly calendar, or rather a 445 calendar, where we need to compare the same number of weeks for each period. We are no longer interested in matching the last sales date to previous year's date. We want to ensure we compare the first n number of weeks in the current year and in the previous year as well. well let's have a look at this report page. All of the visual elements focus on so-called year-to-date figure. But what is that year-to-date time period? What dates are included here? Do we use a comparable period, such as all dates until the 25th of April? Or is it more of a January till April comparison, where the measure for last year includes more dates? To eliminate this kind of confusion, we can add the time frame measure to the page. Again, there are many different ways to create such a calculation, but I'm going to show you one that I usually like to add to my report pages. It involves the creation of five measures, so stay with me on this one. I already have four measures to identify minimum and maximum dates for the weekly time period. These ones. So 
So now all I have to do is to create a time frame measure. Just like this. I use the concatenate function to add the line break as I like that format better. Now we can add this measure to our report page and format to our likings. Just like that, after a little bit of tinkering, we have a time frame measure that helps users to identify the period we call year to date, even if they adjust the number of weeks included in the report. I reckon these solutions are fairly easy to add to any existing report and they have the potential to assist you in two key areas. First of all, they provide a better user experience by removing the mental burden for end users of figuring out what time period is included in the report. Secondly, as a report developer, you can streamline the task of manually updating a text box with the relevant date or time frame. There are other ways you can further enhance these options by adjusting the measures to your liking. So make sure to test what makes sense the most to you and your users to fully utilize the report. With that said, I'm keen to hear what options you have implemented before and after watching this tutorial to showcase timeframes in your report. Use the comments box below to share your solution before and after watching this tutorial. I'm excited to hear how you take it to the next level. Thanks for staying till the end. I hope you learned something new today. If that's the case, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, check out these tutorials to take your Power BI journey to the next stage. Until the next time, see ya.